most people just kind of, you know, drive past in their car and think, oh, the tower's making noise, uh, and don't realize, well, wait, this is, this is somebody making music up there. This tower is only 40-something feet square, and so our entire operation is completely self-contained here on the ninth floor. Well, actually, ninth and tenth floor, because the, the bells take up all of the tenth floor. The tower stands 212 feet tall. The bells are about 120 feet off the campus floor. Uh, there are 43 tons of bells total. So this is a massive machine. And if you want to realize in terms of scale how quickly the weight adds up, approximately every five notes, and there are 53 total here, so 53 total notes means 53 total bells, every five bells the weight doubles. This is a very curious history about our instrument and the reason why it's important even in terms of American history is because this is the oldest program for the study of the carillon and campanology in the nation. And the first carillon program was really established in Mechelen, Belgium in 1927. We were the second carillon program in the world. We were established in 1936 when the instrument was commissioned. And it's important that this is the first school for carillon in North America because all the caroloneers that were later to go out and build the two or three hundred instruments that are there now studied here. So this place influenced them pretty profoundly. There's all sorts of legends about this place. Percival Price, who was a second university caroloneer, he was here for 32 years, basically built the program. He came in 1938. He evidently used to have square dances up on the 11th floor. There's, there's one floor above the bells, which is this vast open, open room, which is now made most famous because the falcons we have live up there. A couple of years after I first came here, it had been discovered that these peregrine falcons had been living for a month in this tower. And I was like, oh, stop the bells, stop the bells, we don't want to scare the falcons off. And then, of course, we found out the falcons live on the Brooklyn Bridge, so they just seemed very happy nesting here with the bells ringing anyway. Uh, it was one of the more memorable moments in the publicity of the instrument because we got publicity for not ringing the bells as opposed to ringing the bells. Uh, and, you know, just great stories besides. Everyone is always welcome here. Every day that classes are in session, this tower is open and there's a recital played at 12 noon. That's been our tradition since 1936. And the general public is welcome every day, 12 to 12.30, come on up and see the bells. Um, but also students need to be aware that they can, they can learn to play this instrument. We're very welcoming to students uh, in this program and we want them uh, to know that this is a part of how they can give back to the campus too. There's a lot of towers that make noise and have speakers, I mean thousands of towers that have speakers uh, in them that, that play something that kind of sounds like bells, although that just makes my teeth grit to think about it. Um, I would encourage people just to take a minute to think about what it means to, to have the real thing or not. What is here is very special and I think its reason for existing is for the magic it creates. There's a certain magic here and in this sound and it creates a certain feeling of this place. And that is so special and so unlike any other gift I know of that has ever been given to this university. And I think that's something truly remarkable.